Your forecast first, sponsored by Matax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. A beautiful shot here on our Gibson Area Hospital camera as the sun setting here tonight after what was a cloudy and a very rainy start to the day. We find ourselves here seeing a really nice evening with temperatures that are still pretty comfortable. The rain finally clearing. You can see a little activity south of I-70. But we're pretty much done with these showers. They've all kind of left the area, so we're looking a lot better. Still 52 in Champaign at Effingham, 53 in Springfield. As we go throughout tonight, we'll see these temperatures cooling off a little bit more, back down to the low 40s. A little bit of a break from the rain, but more in store for the weekend. We'll track that for you when we come back. WCI3 News starts right now. Now on WCIA3 News. A new season is about to get underway for the orange and blue. We have team coverage as a new season gets start for the Illini. Plus, COVID-19 claimed the lives of the elderly disproportionately. Why that group is now showing how to stay healthy. And racism is being spread in central Illinois. We will show you what's being dropped in some yards that proves it. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 6. The Illini leaving for Indy with a send-off more than a decade in the making. Good evening, I'm Paul Cicchini. And I'm Jennifer Roscoe. The team left for Indianapolis in the Big Ten Tournament this afternoon. Our sports director, Brett Behrens, is with us now with team coverage. We are ready to play. Most hype since 2005. Yes. That's not hyperbole, right? This is the best team since then as well. Both the stats and how much fun Atlanta Nation is having shows that. All right, WCI3's Marley Weird and Andy Olson are live outside Lucas Oil Stadium. And I see in there in Indianapolis. What's the feeling like you guys have got other than some rain around uh, Big Ten country today? Well, there's definitely some electricity around this place, Brett, and the Illini are ready to make more noise than they have since 2005. You're going to hear that a lot in the next month, but that's just how good this team is. It's the best title contending team that they've had since that time, Marley. And they've really been able to find their stride in these last few weeks of the season, including big marquee wins on the road against Michigan and Ohio State, and they'll look to keep that going here at Lucas Oil Stadium for the Big Ten Tournament. The only real blemish on their record was an early conference loss to Maryland at home. But as Andre Curbelo put it, when this team is focused and locked in, there's not a team in the country that could take them down. We're going to go on the court. We're going to give it our all. Um, but if we're not mentally ready, I think, you know, we could be beat. And that's the only way we're going to get beat. Mentally, we're not ready because we, we showed it, you know, Michigan. And, you know, all the games when, you know, when we come in mentally ready to go, ain't nobody going to beat us. The key, of course, will be staying locked in. Even though the Illini didn't lose, there are a handful of games that were maybe a little bit too close for comfort. And to get to where they want to go, Andy, they're going to need to stay locked in and focused for the next nine games. Now, tonight at 6.30, we'll have even more coverage of the Illini and the Your Illini Nation return to Indy Special. will be in the sports cast as well coming up a little bit later. So for now, Brett, we'll send it back to you. All right, thank you so much. Andy and Marley can't wait to bring you even more of this coverage. We're doing it all live. We've got guests in here, Derek Piper, former Illini Trent Meacham. Everybody knows them. We're breaking down this team, not only this weekend, but for what's ahead as well. Definitely stay tuned for that. 6.30. All right, thanks. The complex the Illini basketball team practices at is getting a makeover. The Oven Basketball Center is in line for a $40 million renovation. It opened in 1998. The facelift will double the square footage of the building. Improvements for both men's and women's teams include more court space, state-of-the-art sports medicine facilities, and an enhanced strength and conditioning area. The older population in Champaign County is a step closer to being fully vaccinated, but health officials are asking for community help to make it happen. WCI 3's Jared Farmer joins us from the newsroom tonight. Jared, who still needs to get their shots? Paul, I spoke with Champaign County's Public Health Administrator Julie Pride, and she talked about ways to get the remaining members of that 65 plus group immunized. She tells me many of these people are still waiting for their vaccines, either missed appointments or just haven't gotten the memo that it's available. So far, just over 72% of people older than 65 in Champaign County have gotten their shots. She says they're reaching out to faith-based groups, nursing homes, and other partners in the county to turn that 72% into 100. 
if there's a group that um, is vaccine hesitant for whatever reason, you know, we're happy to talk to them, uh, answer questions, get them to talk with a, a physician or a healthcare provider, you know, whatever helps to get their questions answered. She says you can do your part by talking with your older loved ones and keeping them informed about the vaccine. You can also have them contact public health directly to answer any questions or concerns they might have. To learn more about how to set up an appointment or to address your concerns, please check out our website at WCIA.com. Paul, back to you. All right, Jared, so how does that 72% in Champaign County compare in other parts of central Illinois? Well, Paul, as it currently stands, Champaign County is far ahead. I called a few other departments. Coles County has gotten up to 46% of their elderly population immunized, while Vermillion and Macon counties are hovering around 30%. A lot more to go, obviously. Jared, thanks for that update. Now, over 353,000 doses of the vaccine have been administered in long-term care facilities statewide. Almost 112,000 shots were doled out yesterday. And that means over 3.6 million total doses of the vaccine have been done statewide. Now, there are 55 more deaths from the disease in the last 24 hours and another 1,700 new infections. But the state's seven-day positivity rate has dropped again a little bit, now at 2.5%. Today marks, of course, one year since the World Health Organization officially declared COVID-19 a global pandemic. At the time, there were 118,000 known cases and 4,000 deaths around the world. Fast forward to today, the virus has killed about 23,000 people in Illinois alone, including 131 in Champaign County. CUPHD's Julie Pride says she knew before March that this would become a pandemic. What I couldn't have predicted was the, um, the way everything was politicized and people were basically putting themselves and their families at risk due to misinformation. She says that's partly why we're still here a year later. Pride also says we're not out of the woods yet and must follow public health measures until more people can get vaccinated. Other news now. One person was seriously hurt after a head-on crash in Macon County. Happened today on Route 121 near Mount Zion. State police say a car drove into the oncoming lane and plowed into another car. The driver who caused the crash was seriously hurt. Three people in the other car were also hurt. And this is an update. A man was found guilty of murdering a mother and daughter. A jury found Jonathan Perry guilty of first degree murder. His girlfriend, 54 year old Kimberly Coyne and her daughter, 24 year old Blair Coyne, were both found shot to death in their home in St. Joseph last year. Perry's mother was the one who called 911. She told them she thought he hurt his girlfriend and her daughter. Perry told deputies he was having mental health issues. He's now facing a mandatory life sentence. There are more messages of hate being delivered to people's front yards. This time it happened in Leroy and Muhammad. WCI 3's Abigail Metz joins us now. So Abigail, we have seen this before. Paul, something similar happened in Champaign and Urbana in January. Neighbors found plastic bags like this one filled with rocks and a flyer that said no white guilt. This time around, the bag looks the same, but the message is much more unhinged. It's filled front and back with some pretty wild conspiracy theories. Leroy po police posted this on Facebook. They're looking for this white van. People say they saw the van pull into their driveway, the passenger throw something and speed away. One woman says she's afraid for her safety and her kids. The kids play together and everything. So to have somebody driving around the neighborhood just tossing these bags with notes and rocks in them, it's very, very scary. Several people say they have home surveillance video of the van driving through their neighborhood. Leroy police say when they find the driver, they'll ticket him for littering. Today I spoke to another neighbor who told me she's worried that her house was a target for this hate because her son is black. And other neighbors say they're not letting their kids out of their sight until they know these people have been caught. Back to you. All right, Abigail, thanks for that update. It's a museum that tells so many stories you maybe have never heard, and they all have a connection to Central Illinois. Also tonight. It's tournament time and the Illini are ready to go. We're live outside Lucas Oil Stadium where the Illini's dynamic duo gets ready for postseason play. And our weather here is improving after it was kind of a rainy and stormy start for some of you out there. Looking down, town in Decatur where the rain has stopped, but there's more rain on the way. We'll talk about that in the cooler temperatures next.